We love Horace Heresy, so when Games Workshop sent us the brand new battalion, we were excited to get our hands on it. Yeah, we're gonna convert up very simply each of the heretical legions. We're also gonna paint them up individually and see how they look with Mark III armor. And show you how good these Mark III Marines look in your favorite legion. This video is sponsored by Ghostfire Gaming's new game found, Aberration. So before we get started doing each of our conversions of the nine trader legions, we've got to check out what's in this box. Have a look at all these brand new sprues, including the delicious Dorito that's inside and show you what you'll be getting on release day if you buy it. So with the Legion's Astartes Battle Group box, this is the first time we're getting rescaled Mark III armor for Horus Heresy. Not only this, the box contains enough sprues for 30 Mark III Marines, as well as some special weapons, a Land Raider Proteus, and the Doradio Dreadnought, or the Great Cheesy Dorito. Now there's a few little points of interest here I wanted to let you all know about. First of all, the sprue for the Mark III is a single sprue that you get six copies of, which means there's five unique sets of poses and arms. These poses also seem to emulate the exact same ones as the Mark VI Marines. Not only this, but the small upgrade sprue with bolt pistols, pouches, grenades, etc., is exactly the same as the Mark III one. So if you're expecting new designs of power weapons, Phobos bolt pistols, etc., you're not going to get them here. Also, the special weapon sprue you get in the box is not the full contents of a special weapons box, but a single sprue, which gives you enough weapons to make five-man teams. On the other side of the spectrum, the Doradio Dreadnought is a giant kit. There are heaps of options on this Dreadnought and I would love to build it another time, but this video has a focus. Now with those minor detractions out of the way, I have to say this box is really good value for a Horus Heresy player. The Land Raider Proteus is a fairly new kit and it comprises almost half the retail value of the entire box. So on top of this, you're getting 30 Marines, some special weapons and a Doradio Dreadnought, which we just know given the amount of sprue is probably gonna cost about the same as the Land Raider. Now we don't get the retail prices for these products when we get sent them. So when this video goes live, you'll all have information that I didn't when I recorded it. So it'll be interesting to see how accurate that was. Now that we've had a look at what we're working with today, it's time to kick off our modeling with Jen starting on the third Legion. So to kick things off, I'm gonna go ahead and start my first army, which is the third Legionnaire's Astartes, Emperor's Children. Now I actually have an interest in Emperor's Children and I think that they're a pretty cool force to be reckoned with. Emperor's children are pretty much known as the most prideful among their other brothers. With Filgrim leading the way, the Emperor's children were known to be strong, civilized, with a firm purpose of loyalty to the core, which is what makes them really interesting in their story as to how they fell to chaos, as their quest for perfection really changed their perspective on the Emperor of Mankind. When it comes to the Mark III armor, I'm not super in love with this for Emperor's children. In some of the previous iterations, they had some of the studs on the shoulder pads and their legs, which are missing in this version. The other marks of armor also tend to have a bit more filigree and some more gold accents to them, which I feel like this one is missing. So for this little kit bash, I decided to change up some of the weapon options, creating a despoiler by giving him a chainsaw and a bolt pistol. The chainsaw that I was able to find had the bird style Aquila at the top of it, which I thought worked really well. I also found this little loincloth as well, which I had seen in previous iterations of Empress Children, and it fitted really nicely into his belt, so I popped this on as well. It took me a while to find a pose for the arms I was happy with, but in the end, I gave him more of a relaxed and standoffish pose. So with him all kit bashed up and looking pretty spiffy, I went ahead and started painting him. Starting off with a black primer and then moving to a purple undercoat. I then went ahead and picked out the accents in a dirty gold color and gave him green eyes to finish him off. And my guys back at home are based in Martian Iron Earth, so I wanted to do the same thing here, creating that nice red dusty environment. And with that, he's pretty much done. So we're gonna move on to the next one. It's my turn to make a model and I'm really excited because my first one up is Iron Warriors, the fourth Legion, one of my favorites. Iron Warriors are typified by their brutal advances across battlefields with infantry supported by huge amounts of artillery fire and heavy tanks. They are the masters of siege warfare and Mark III iron armor is super suitable for them. So when I thought about what unit options in the heresy would be suitable for iron armor for the Iron Warriors, I had a complete open book. Iron armor is favored for its upfront protection and siege warfare is what Iron Warriors specialized in. So they used it extensively throughout their entire Legion. 
thing. However, to hammer in that implacable advance and the sense of desperation from defenders, I thought it'd be cool to make a Legion support squad warrior with a rotor cannon. Now, in terms of conversions with Iron Warriors, they favor extreme simplicity, with most of their iconic elements actually just being Mark III Iron Armor itself. When you think Mark III Armor, you think Iron Warriors, so I don't need to do anything to this. Now, hopefully I've got a really good paint recipe that you can all paint super quickly. This one took me a total of about an hour and a half, and that includes working out how to do it and painting a single model. Batch painting will go way quicker. The way I did it was I sprayed the model in a single color and then lead belcher over the top. That's the important bit. Any areas that would become gold trim, I mixed Dark Oath Flesh and Goros Dunes together and then painted carefully all those trim sections. Once the silver is sprayed, I dry brush a bright silver on all of the highest highlight areas to add some differentiation. Areas that would be deeper metallics, I used just Gore Grunter Fur over that silver. All of the areas that will be remaining silver, I put a null oil gloss wash in. By using a gloss wash, this model will have a really oily, mechanical and industrial feel. It will also maintain the sheen that metallic armor should have. With all these areas picked out, it's time to do the stripes. And the easiest way to do that is with some masking tape. Simply measure out an even size strip, and then you can lay this across the model. By using these guides, you'll ensure that all of your stripes are the same width. As a fairly experienced painter, I don't literally need to mask the shoulders off, but if you need to, that will probably help out. For me, I just use it as a size guide. Black areas such as the gun and the shoulder pads and the knee, which will have hazard stripes on them, are all painted just using Viejo matte black. I use three Viejo paints, starting with Beastie Brown, moving through bronze flesh tone, and then gold yellow stippled on on the highlights on the top. This keeps it looking nice and rough and iron warriors -y. To finish off the model with a last layer of grit, I used Agrax Earthshade Gloss and ran it down as if rain marks on various areas on the model, such as the top of the shoulder pads, recessing it into the bottom of the shoulder pads and running it down the chest plate. And for the blacks, I just put a simple gray highlight on them. For the basing, I used Gamer's Grass, Tufts, as well as a laser cut plant, and then Martian Iron Earth on the whole thing. Overall, this is a super quick paint scheme and one that honestly, I think looks awesome. And I hope you can all use it to make really quick Iron Warriors armies that are impressive on the table. Oh, and it has eyes. The eyes are like orange. Now, if you'd like here, you can freehand on some squad markings or use the Iron Warriors transfer sheet to put some transfers on. But as I'm not an Iron Warriors player, we don't have them on hand and they don't come in the box. You could use 40K transfers from Chaos Space Prince. They are mildly different, but they're an option as well. With that done, it's back to Jen. And next up, we have the eighth Legion Astartes, the Night Lords. And Night Lords are definitely a faction that already had a bit of heresy to begin with. They're pretty much known for their malicious behavior and bring untold horrors to the Imperium. Night Lords draw a lot of inspiration from vampires and that sort of gothic, horrific look. I'm really excited to try and kit bash today. So Night Lords are a faction that I've heard of a little bit, but I don't feel like they get a ton of love. However, I do feel like I can incorporate some really cool theming into this guy to make him look like a true Night Lord. There are a couple of things we found laying around that could work really well, including this shield that has this little vampire head on it, and these frills that I believe are from a monster in Age of Sigma as well. Once he was looking pretty good, the only last thing I wanted to add was a chain with a couple of skulls on it just to give him that horrific vampire look. So I knew that this marine would have a shield in one hand and a bolter in the other, making him an awesome breacher. Once he was all dried, I went ahead and did the same method I'd done previously, priming him in a black and then a base coat of a dark blue, making sure to work in those red accent colors and metallics as well. Once I was happy with how he was looking, I also went ahead to add a little bit of weathering, some chipping and some fading, as well as that final touch of gothic blood. Moving on to basing, I wanted to kind of keep it dull and like a graveyard sort of look. So I went ahead and added some dead plants as well as some dead grass. And with that, my Night Lord is all done. Now my first legionary is gonna be from the 12th legion of the World Eaters. And their infamous trait is being absolutely animalistic. They have the butcher's nails surgically implanted into all their marines in honor and camaraderie with their Primarch who had it done as a gladiator on the world he was brought up on. And as a result, all their marines in battle lose all sensible thought and cognitive thought as they just lose themselves to a complete and utter bloodlust. So as such, I think a despoiler would be the perfect place to start. So first things first, I'm gonna build the body and then I'll finagle the bolter arms into some manner that befits someone who's very angry and running around with a chainsaw. After that, I'll add the bolt pistol to the other hand and then add a couple of extra additions, some chains and skulls. We'll pay nice homage to his newfound deity. Now, world eaters are mostly white, so I think that's the most important part to get down straight right away. So I'm gonna paint this guy gray and then go in with a zenithal of white aerosol. Pretty much as if I was setting up to do a slap chop 
method. Then I mixed up a really nice strong dark blue contrast mix, put those onto the various areas, mostly the shoulder pads and the backpack, but I decided to do the chainsaw as well. Then a really strong dark brown wash onto all the metal areas. This will allow me to go in and just highlight those metal areas with a metallic color. Super simple, super vibrant, looks great. But what will really bring World Eaters to life is the extra effects, namely blood. I want blood special effects on his chainsaw and then some dripping down out of his grill, as if to suggest that he's fully lost himself to the pain of the nail. Then I'm gonna apply some basing mixture, wait for that to dry, and then go in with a red pigment, as this will help tie everything to the base. There, simple. Are you looking for a great new board game for your next board game night? Well, it ain't under our table. Beloved local Aussie games company, Ghostfire Gaming, is now launching Aberration on GameFound. It's a cooperative tower defense board game by game designer Peter Lee, most known for his work on the immensely popular Lords of Waterdeep. Set in Ghostfire's grim hollow setting, take command of unique heroes as they use their asymmetric abilities to attempt to protect a village from total annihilation. You'll never know what's around the corner in this game, with enemies appearing as secret tokens until you get close or light fires and reveal their identities. Grow in power as you gain experience fighting the monsters, blessed you become the very creatures you fight. You can mix and match your hero's class and abilities to ensure that each game is fresh every time. Fight, struggle, and answer the question, can you resist the honk of doom? As you face the dreaded giant Gastra. Aberration is live right now on GameFound in its final days. And backing now gets you access to exclusive discounted prices, as well as the GameFound only deluxe edition. It contains he Heaps of unique exclusive bonuses, including 25 custom miniatures to make sure you've got something to keep you busy on the hobby table. Links are down in the description. Checking them out not only supports Aussie YouTubers like us, but also great Aussie indie dev companies like Ghostfire Gaming. Thanks everyone. I hope you check out the campaign and have a lot of fun with Aberration. But for now, let's get back to being heretical. And just when you thought you got rid of me, I'm back to do the 14th Legion, the Death Guard, who are renowned for their utter resilience and their method of war, which is to slowly approach the enemy and grind them into dust. I've actually been enjoying Death Guard more and more as I read them in the Horus Heresy, as their personality traits seem to linger between very dark and brooding to very dark humor, as they quite enjoy and are quite positive about the whole death and decay and god of disease that's sort of their new patron. Not to mention that they find find the little Nurglings actually adorable, which is super weird and I love it. Now Mark III armor is an absolute match in heaven for Death Guard for how they just walk forwards, take all the hits and deliver it in return. Now as for what squad this Legionary will belong to, I'm going to choose one of the support squads and give him a flamer, which can be upgraded to a Legion specific flamer, which belches all sorts of terrible biohazards and chemicals. So I'll choose my body and take out one of the flamers from the support sprue, which is really cool that he gets so many weapon options in this kit. And a lot of the 40k Plague Marines have their armor more or less based entirely upon this Mark III armor. So I'm going to take one of the spare Plague Marine heads, which looks exactly like the old Mark III armor. So it's just a little bit more bulky. And I'm going to put it onto this Legionary. And with the added mass, I think it'll look like the old school Mark III armor. I'm on the fence whether or not I like the design of the new helmets. They look at just a little bit flimsy for such big, heavy, overbearing armor. So I'd like to see in the comments what you guys think about my conversion here. Does the bulkier helmet help sell the armor or is it just a bit too big? Now with that in place, I'm going to add just a few more garnishes to the rest of the model to make him feel a bit more Death Guard. And then he'll be right to start painting. Now Heresy Death Guard are pictured as a very off white. So I'm going to start with a very sandy yellow. This will give a really nice moldy color. You know, just what everyone wants. Then in the same way as my World Eater, I'm gonna Zenithal with a white from the top. Now I think the best part about painting Death Guard is that everything is really honestly weathering. So we're gonna have a lot of fun painting this guy. I'm actually gonna stipple a whole variety of colors straight onto the armor using the brush. And if it looks just a bit too blotchy, wipe it in a streaking motion with your hand and you'll get some really cool running rust effects. After I'm happy with those areas, I'm gonna go in with brown and black washes and do all the metal areas. In exactly Exactly the same way. Give that strong, rich contrast base coat and then highlight with metal. For finishing touches, I'm gonna run some more streaks of a sepia color and also using that to pin wash every single recess on the miniature. As a final garnish, I decided to mix up a really strong, rich green wash and put that over the canister of his flamer as I wanted to differentiate it. It's part of the special Death Guard war gear and not just a normal flamer. Then some astro granite onto the base. And once that's dry, I'm gonna use some green pigment to make it all gross, verdant, and even add a couple of plants. As Nurgle is, of course, 
the father of life. And there we have it, another Space Marine ready. It's time for the 14th Legion, one of my absolute favorites. The Thousand Sons are known for their mastery of the arcane arts, an enlightened but small legion of sorcerers and warrior poets. One of the greatest tragedies of the Horus Heresy and one of my all time faves. Not every mark of Space Marine power armor is super suitable for every legion, but there are law excuses for all of them to have any of them. The Thousand Sons were quite small in number and had strong ties to local forge worlds, which meant they often had access to much more higher quality and newer gear than their brother legions. This is because they'd get the same allocation of resources for a much smaller number of warriors. So personally, I don't feel that iron armor is incredibly suitable for most options for the Thousand Sons, especially their elites or advanced warriors who'd be in newer suits of armor, more favored to their psychic ways of fighting. Which means for me, I feel it's best suited to some tactical squads or line infantry that are using some of the older equipment, but are of low enough importance that they're not assigned newer gear. I decided to go with their unique war gear, the Asphyx Bolter. I represented this using a Thousand Suns Rubric Marine Bolter, and thankfully, as that squad is often built with flamers, it's easy to find these lying around. You can actually interchange a lot of the 40K Thousand Suns parts with heresy models, which is fantastic, but I try and keep it minimal to ensure they have a distinct vibe. To go crazy on this model, however, Thousand Suns often have these fancy crests, and I decided to cut the end off a crossbow from one of these Stormcast Eternals, which is this glorious holy hand grenade vibe, and give him an ostentatious magic pointy hat. Finish it up by adding some scrolls on his waist. It feels pretty regal. Painting Thousand Suns is incredibly easy. All you need to do is use a gold spray paint on a darker color and then dry brush it with a brighter gold. Once this is done, a druchy violet wash over the whole model is followed up by a final mix of silver and gold as a little zenithal highlight dry brush on everything again. Once upon a time, it was recommended to use glazes and gemstone paints, but Games Workshop don't produce these anymore. So I made up a recipe I think you can all use that works really well. Simply mix 50% gloss varnish with the Blood Angels contrast paint and then carefully paint these on all of the armored areas of the model. This gives a beautiful beetle-like sheen to the model and I think it's fantastic. Now to break up some areas of the model as well as the bolter, paint them in a khaki and highlight up to a cream and then point highlight to an almost off-white. With this done, squad markings can be used with gorgeous transfers or freehand. I thankfully have collected a small force of Thousand Suns and I've got some of the transfers. As a final touch, the eyes and also the ostentatious gem in this man's hat, I'm going to paint a bright glowing green. For the basing, I'm going to be reminiscent of Tiska using some temple ruins painted white. And now I pass the baton to Jen again. And for my final paint job and conversion for the day, I'm doing the 16th Legion Astartes Sons of Horus. So as you can probably guess, the Sons of Horus were Marines that were super loyal to Horus. Throughout the Horus Heresy, the Sons of Horus are pretty much at the forefront of a lot of battles. They were also there at the very end of the Horus Heresy. So Mark III armor for the Sons of Horus is actually pretty fitting. There's definitely some small bits I wanna try and incorporate, but overall, I think that the armor works really well. Some of these things include a brand new head. I wanna have one with a plain on top to make him look more like a son of Horus. Also want to go ahead and try and find a shoulder pad with a few spiky bits on him to make him look just a little bit more grunty. And I'm pretty happy with how this kit bash came together, but I definitely want to add some extra bits when it comes to painting. I went ahead and primed him in black and then gave him a base color of a tealy green. I went ahead and added in some metallics and began adding in that extra detail. Sons of Horus are usually depicted with a ton of blood on them, so I definitely wanted to incorporate that in this model. Also added some weathering effects to really make it look like this legionnaire had been in a ton of battles. And when it came to basing this particular model, I wanted to create a bit of terror itself, giving it pretty standard in terms of basing techniques, but wanted to make it a little bit duller. Like the earth was slowly decaying and losing a bit of its color. And with that, my Sons of Horus is all done and we're moving on to the next one. My last legion are the 17th, the word bearers, rivals to the Ultramarines, and actually the most devout to the Emperor. Now the word bearers revered the Emperor as a god, even before the 40K setting, and they got in a lot of trouble for doing so, as the Emperor did not want to be worshipped as a god. So they had a lot of a uh, smack on their hand happening, and they became very jaded for it, as they decided to seek a new god, or four. As a result, the word bearers were the first legion to fall to chaos, and even brought down Horus with them. More or less, in Instigating the entire setting for millennia to come. Essentially a space marine that is now house sharing with a demon inside his own body, allowing them to become even more powerful in combat. But that's quite an elite unit and pretty much deserves a video all on its own. So I'm gonna do more of a run of the mill marine as the word burrows are more infamous for how they behave more than what armor they take. So I'm gonna make a standard stock marine with a vexilla attached as the word bearers have all this really cool iconography all over them. So after gluing that to the model, I'm going to also equip him with a plasma 
Plasma Gun. As another Legion specific upgrade, they can take Warp Fire Blasters, which is super cool as it's just plasma weapons, but even scarier. Now my final addition to the Word Bearer is to give him a small athame on the back of his belt. Now the Word Bearers use these as symbols of office and honor among their own Legion, and also really like to sacrifice a lot of people. And now with that finished, I can start painting, which is where the Word Bearer will really come to life. For the Word Bearers, I wanted a fairly strong red for this one to try and affect, but more on that later. I'm gonna prime him white, and then after gluing down some sand to do the base, we like to paint miniatures with the bases already intact on the model, rather than doing them later. But that's down to personal preference. Now once that's dry, then I'll go in with a mix of a strong red and purple color to ink down all of the armor. I'll also wash the terrain a strong brown color, as well as any metallic areas and off panels, painting them black. Now it's time for all the cool runes that the word bearer is known for. I'm gonna sketch in a whole lot of different scribbles to imply glyphs, and then highlight everything very subtly using a bit of a red. Then I'll paint in all the metals and do a glowing effect for the warp fire blaster. A bit of a dry brush on the base, and we have finished our word bearer. All right, so I'm last in line and I'm painting my favorite legion, the actual legion I collect, the Alpha Legion, the 20th. Alpha Legion operatives are known for doing everything really well. They're kind of like the clandestine special forces of the Space Marines, and as such, they use the right tool for the right job every time. Which means this conversion, I've got heaps of options. So I've got plans to make a squad of Alpha Legion veterans who use a Terax termite drill. They drill underneath enemy fortifications and invade, so I think iron armor will be perfect for these veterans, representing a preference for heavy upfront armor and gear that will be quite resilient to cave-ins and underground operations. There's a perfect head in this new Mark III kit that just looks like Alpharius, so I'm gonna use that one just because I think it'll be cool. I went with a melter gun and then loaded this model up with a whole bunch of pouches and grenades to show that this veteran deep behind enemy lines is equipped for anything he could run into. I made sure to include a nice gas mask. Worth noting here that all the accessories from the Mark VI kit you get with Mark III do not fit on these models quite as well. It's still fine, but with the extra bulk of the Mark III armor, sometimes it's hard to find a spot to put grenades, pouches, and a pistol. Now, unlike all the other paint jobs today, my Alpha Legion paint job is a little bit more intensive. It involves a five color airbrush xenothal, which is completely ridiculous and mostly makes sense when batch painting, going from purple all the way up to a spritz of Aramon blue on the top. Ever since the Sons of Horus have had their color theme slightly changed in 2.0 to be more teal than their original sea green, I've decided to include a little bit more blue in my Alpha Legion paint schemes to differentiate them. All of the trim I paint with a non-metallic silver that has a touch of brown using Viejo Stonewall Gray, Smoky Ink, and Cold Gray. Metallic areas of the model are painted in a dark non-metallic metal and pouches in a nice rich brown. To add finishing touches to the model, I use the lovely Alpha Legion transfer set that I have. And as a unique point, this model will be remaining unbased. That's because I haven't decided how I'm basing my army so all of them are currently on black plastic bases. And when I figure it out, I'll let you know. With Alpha Legion done, that is all nine Trader Legions complete. Let's take a look at the reveals and check them all out. And thank you to all of our wonderful patrons who allow us to create the content that we do by supporting the channel. It wouldn't be possible for us to make the content we do two videos a week if it wasn't for your support, so we really appreciate it. Links are in the description if you like what we do and you wanna see us keep doing it. It was super fun being hands-on with the brand new Mark III Marines. And while there are things I love about the old designs, it's definitely cool to have these in scale with the rest of my Alpha Legion. Yeah, it's really interesting to look at the new designs and sort of talk about what we like and maybe don't like about it. We'd love to hear your own thoughts in the comments. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe as well. And a huge thanks to Ghostfire Gaming for sponsoring this video and letting us play with Heresy Marines. I'm looking sus because Alpha Legion. He would. <laughs>